Hong Kong has been a British colony since 1983 for over 130 years. As English became the official language in addition to its importance in business and trading, it became increasingly prestigious in the society, even the major population of Hong Kong was actually Cantonese-speaking ethnic Chinese. Numbers of EMI schools have significantly risen, and they became more and more preferable for the parents. Yet, in 1986, the Hong Kong government started to encourage schools to use Chinese as their medium of instruction, and until September 1997, the Education Bureau announced the MOI guidance for secondary schools, and Mother Tongue education was mandatorily implemented in the following year. At that time, only 140 schools were allowed to remain English as the MOI among all 500 schools in Hong Kong. This policy was blamed by the public, claiming that mother tongue education has caused a decline in English level students. Under the public pressure, Xu Mingyang, the former Secretary for Education, announced the MOI fine tuning policy in 2008, allowing schools to choose the most suitable MOI for students. Arguments about the Hong Kong education language policies have lasted for years. How have these policies influenced our education? Is mother tongue education really a failure in Hong Kong? Mandy Kong is a secondary 5 student who is now studying in a EMI school in Tumun district. One major reason for her to choose this school is that it could provide her more exposure to English that may help her in the future compared to CMI schools. Yet, her study in this school was not smooth at all. She also said that during the exam, she often misunderstood the questions or faced difficulties in expressing her ideas, which in turn greatly affected her academic results and passion in learning. One major aim of government's mother tongue education policy is to enhance the efficiency of students' learning. Research has proved that students could learn faster with a more familiar language. Thus, mother tongue education could provide students with a strongest learning foundation. However, the reduced exposure to English environment and the mother tongue education was blamed to hinder a student's English ability. In addition to providing up to $0.5 million sponsor for CMI schools per year to create more English environment, the government announced the MOI fine-tuning policy so as to increase schools' flexibility in choosing education language. Henry Wong came from a traditional CMI school and is currently studying in the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Under the fine-tuning policy, he was allowed to use English textbooks starting from secondary three while Cantonese remained the major language used during lessons. He said that the major benefit of this policy was to help him overcome the fear towards English. He also said that his school had been consistently organizing various English activities like musicals and drama nights to improve students' speaking ability. Henry said that it was unwise to slightly increase exposure to English but sacrifice students' performance and interest in other academic subjects. The fine-tuning policy was regarded as a supplement of the mother tongue education policy, keeping the advantages of mother tongue education and compensating the reduced exposure to English environment. Dr. Tai Chung Pui, a professor from the University of Hong Kong said that mother tongue education should be carried on and the fine-tuning policy is a brilliant way to help its maintenance. He also said that mother tongue education not only helped students enhancing the learning efficiency but also constructing national identity. Regarding the public concern towards the decline in the English level of students, Dr. Tsai suggested that it was not the policy of the school should bear the responsibility but the planning of language use in the society. He said that Hong Kong has a highly monolingual society and thus children's ability to develop multilingualism was comparatively weaker than the regions like Malaysia and Singapore. So on the street, if you want to buy something from the shop, you may, you may need to speak Chinese or you may speak 
you, you may speak Malay or you may speak English. So that in their daily environment, they are already using many, many languages. So the kids uh, following their, their parents can learn different languages from the family environment or the daily life or from the, from the neighborhood. But in Hong Kong, especially in those what we call the humble communities, all the people just speaking Cantonese. Pointing out that there were many ethnic minorities who spoke English living in Hong Kong, Dr. Tai suggested the government should make good use of the ethnic diversity and to encourage binding of ethnic Chinese and other minorities so as to increase children's exposure to English environments in their daily lives. It is true that mother tongue education has caused a decline in English level of students, which has been blamed by the society for years. Nonetheless, under the economic globalization, the society is expecting more English talents than ever before. Yet, English training is only part of our purpose of education, and we are also looking for an all-around development of students. From the perspective of education, the modern term policy itself is not a failure, but just did not match with the expectation of the society. All we need are improvements like the fine-tuning policy and promotion of multilingualism, so that we can achieve our education needs and satisfy the expectation of the society.